The idea is just bizarre to suggest that some of the things we're recommending are contrary to the Constitution. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic. Let me say it again. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic. Today, first state in the nation is going to declare a disaster emergency on gun violence. They're not serious about violence if they're not serious about gun violence. And if they're not serious about gun violence, and they will not evaluate the absurdity of a decision like this, a weapon of war, nothing more than a weapon of war. YouTube family, welcome back to another episode of 2A in LA. As always, anything I say in this episode, prior episodes, and future episodes is just my personal opinion. It is not the opinion of my employers. It is not the opinion of any company that I own. It is not fact. It is not law. You should always do your own homework and come up with your own conclusions. All right? Look, let's get this episode rolling. This is going to be a great episode uh, because I am going to be giving you some vital, vital information. Uh, it'll probably be longer than my typical episode, so I apologize for that in advance, but there's a lot of information that I want to disseminate to you guys, and I want to talk, I want to frame, try to frame an open and honest discussion of the topic, which is gun control in the United States of America. And... If we're going to talk about gun control, I think we have to talk about the evolution of it in this country. And, and, and to do that, we have to kind of start off with where it all stems, stems from, which is our Second Amendment right. So why don't we start the episode with a resuscitation of the Second Amendment so we can all be clear. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Okay, so having heard that, obviously the Second Amendment is broken up into two parts. The first speaks to a well-regulated -reg militia uh, in defense of the state, and the other one uh, is more specific relative to the individual rights of the people to bear arms. I do not want to make it seem like I am a constitutional scholar. I am not. Um, and certainly there are many arguments to be had as to the intent of the founders when they framed the Second Amendment. Obviously, they had just escaped the rule of a government that they felt was tyrannical and were concerned that... Uh, the United States never became that way. And so they wanted the, the states to have the ability to protect themselves. And I don't think it's an accident that they further enunciated the individual rights to keep and bear arms. And so for those individuals who would argue that the Second Amendment was never meant uh, to provide rights to individual citizens to carry arms in the way that it is being uh, proposed today, I would tell you I'm not a, I'm not a, a legal scholar, I'm not a lawyer, um, but I tell you you're on the wrong side of the law. The law of the land, generally speaking, is that the Second Amendment does protect individual citizens the right to keep and bear arms. And so I think that's as far as I want to go. If you are in agreement that there is some level, that the, that the Second Amendment pro provides some protection relative to its citizens to arm itself, then I think we can establish that and move on to the more pressing uh, uh, discussion. And that is gun control, okay? 
If you, if you are going to have, going to give individuals the right to, to keep and bear arms, and while the Constitution says that right is un, uninfringed, I personally, and this is going to shock people, so stand back, <laughs> stand back and get ready because it's coming, 2A in L.A. believes in gun control. You, you probably didn't see that coming, right? Now, the Constitution says, the, I'm sorry, the Second Amendment says, the individual's right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, there are purists out there who take that literally, who feel like they should have access to any weapon, firearm, that they can have at their disposal without being infringed upon by state or federal government. I don't feel that way. I don't want my next door neighbor having a nuclear weapon. Right? I, I, don't, I don't want my next door neighbor out there putting landmines in his front yard. I think some stuff is overkill. I think some regulation is necessary. Okay? So I am for some gun control. I think certain uh, uh, real weapons of mass destruction uh, probably should not be in the hands of private citizens. I am for uh, background checks so that violent felons are not walking into gun stores and buying guns. Um, I am for, you know, some, whatever we can do to ensure that people who are dangerous uh, to themselves or others uh, we can do to try to prevent them from doing harm. I am for education and training being required before you buy a firearm. Now that I've said all of that, guess what? All those laws are already on the books. <laughs> They're already on the books. You can't buy a gun without taking a background check, but, but, but without going through a background check. Convicted felons are not allowed to go into stores and buy firearms. And so for me, the conversation is not really, I think even almost all of the most, you know, uh, gung-ho 2A advocates would have to concede that some level of gun control is necessary. Um, again, the question though is, and the reason why I'm having this debate is because of with the current federal administration and everything that we're seeing at the state level, uh, gun control is a hot topic. They want to do more. Now, look, I, I, I said when I started my channel, I wanted to be open. I wanted to be honest. And... I said in another video that I feel like people on the right and people on the left lack empathy for one another and they lack self-awareness. Everybody thinks that they're right without any flaws or faults. And I still hold that to be true. I think we need to do a lot less arguing and a lot more listening to one another. And I'm talking about the people here. However, some things are not nuanced. Some things are not, some things are black and white. Uh, some things are math. You know, some things are just the numbers. Now, Democrats were very, very critical of Donald Trump and the outgoing administration claiming that there was widespread election fraud and irregularities in the last presidential election and that Donald Trump ginned up this to a feverish pitch and riled up his base to the point that where it led to an attack on the nation's capital and Democrats labeled that the big lie. Okay, look, let me just say this. Donald Trump lost. Some stuff is just math. It ain't about right or left, up or down, whatever, liberal or conservative. He, it, it, sometimes it's just math. He had less votes. He lost. 
I'm not buying conspiracy theories that the Democrats were able to do all this. Were there election irregularities? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you can't do an election for a high school prom king without having some kind of irregularity. The question is, were the irregularities enough to change the outcome of the election? And they were not. They simply were not. Okay, and if you haven't accepted that at this point in time, I, I don't know what to say to you. Now, the flip side of that coin is, and again, as somebody who is kind of a centrist, more left leaning, it doesn't give me any pleasure to, and I'm certainly not gloating that Donald Trump lost the election, not at all, not even a little bit. What I am trying to say though is, what you heard from the liberal media and from Democratic politicians, because really when I talk, I'm talking about them. What you heard from them was, oh, this was all a big lie, right? And I said, if we're going to be open and we're going to have to be honest, we're going to have to have empathy for people who don't think like we do, and we're going to have to be self-aware. And so if I'm taking an honest assessment to, of the Democratic Party, I think one of the things that I'm going to say right now is that the Democrats have their own big lie, and it's gun control. And so for us to really get down into the nitty gritty of this, I, got, I have to give you the math. Like I said, some things are, are not about nuance, some things are not about opinion, some things are just what they are. The election was math, more votes. More, more popular votes, more electoral votes gets you an election. And I think to a large extent, the gun control conversation, uh, people are not giving you the math or they're giving you a shade of the math. So what I want to do in this video is I want to give you the tools so that you can have an open and honest dialogue with other people who either agree with you or disagree with you about whether or not we need more or less gun control. All right. So look, there are over 300 million people in the United States uh, to have some contacts. Contacts are about over 270,000 automobiles. So we have almost one automobile for every person in this country. Right. So we have a lot of cars, a lot, a lot of cars. Again, I'm giving you the number, not that cars are relevant. I'm just context. I think when people talk, there's no context anymore. And so 276,000 automobiles, over 300 million people. You know how many guns we have in this country? Over 400 million guns. There are more guns than people in this country, in this country. Okay. So again, context, I think context matters, right? Cause you can't, unless you know all the facts, unless you know, unless you have a good context, you can't make an informed decision about something. And so if you get nothing else out of this video, I want you to have proper context. Okay, 400 million people, I'm sorry, 400 million guns, 300 million people. You know how many gun deaths we have every year? 30 to 40,000 gun deaths every year. And I'm not sliding uh, any death. In, any death is a tragedy. And so, but I think again, if you just hear 30, 40,000 without context, that number sounds huge. But when you consider we have 400 million guns out there, 300 million people, and only 30 to 40,000 gun deaths every year, that equates to point zero one of one percent of the population, not one percent of the population, point zero one of one percent of the population. Now, Let's dig. There, there needs to be more context, more context. So let's dig a little bit deeper into that 0.01 of 1%, 30 to 40,000 gun deaths every year, right? Over 60% of those gun deaths per annum are suicides. So I, you don't hear this. And, and this is my, and this is why I call this the Democratic, the, the liberal media and, and Democratic politicians, this is their big lie because they frame it in such a way where you think, first of all, there's, there's all these homicidal maniacs buying guns that are going out and killing all these people and, and the guns are a COVID-like epidemic on our country. 
and it's just not the case. There's 30 to 40 deaths every year. That's 0.01 of 1% of the population. Of that 0.01%, over 60% are suicides. Now, some of you may be like, that is that in and of itself is a reason for greater gun control. To that, I would add more context. I would tell you that almost 13 to 14,000 additional suicides take place every year by strangulation or suffocation. So lack of access to a gun would probably just lead to increases in other means of suicide. The United States for, for, for high income countries, the United States has the second most suicides of any other country except South Korea. Okay? So, you take out that 60-something percent in suicides, take out another 2,000 or so of accidental gun deaths that occur because of accidental discharge, people not handling their firearms safely and properly, and really you get down to about 13,000 or so homicides per year. And again, I am not by any stretch of the imagination belittling the loss of 13,000 lives. Uh, but I just think we need it. When the demo, when, when, when the politicians and the media talk, they don't give, they don't provide any context. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put up on the screen some contextual information so that you guys can have an understanding of what 13,000 homicides looks like relative to the scope of the country. So for comparison's sake, deaths caused by automobile accidents are more than double the homicide rate in the U.S. despite the fact that there are 100 million more guns than automobiles. Over 76,000 people die annually from drug overdoses and other forms of poisoning. This is almost six times the rate of gun homicides in this country. More than 37 people die annually from accidental falls. This is almost three times the homicide rate in this country. More than 55,000 people die annually from the flu. This is more than four times the homicide rate in this country. More people are killed each year from blunt objects such as hammers, baseball bats, and fists than are by AR-15s. There are almost 3 million deaths in the U.S. annually. Of these, gun deaths represent approximately 1%. Gun homicides represent 0.4 of 1%. Okay, guys, so I want to get into a little more depth because I think, again, People, when you hear the argument on TV, pro and against gun control, everybody's just framing the argument to fit their case. I'm trying to get into the real numbers. And then you guys make your own decisions up. Okay, so we talked about the fact that there's only 13,000 real homicides in our country every year. With 400 million guns and 300 million people, you got about 13,000 homicides that take place every year. That number is even, what's more startling about that statistic, or disturbing might be the right, the better word, is that of those 13,000, more than 55% are concentrated in 127 cities. If you laid these 127 cities next to each other, they would be about 42 miles by 42 miles in terms of land mass. And so we're not talking about a huge geographic area. It's where, where this is a real problem is pretty condensed and their cities like you would think of. They're, they're Oakland, California, right? They're New Orleans, they're Chicago, they're New York, areas that are highly urban, areas that are very dense, where people are sitting on top of one another, areas where there is lack of access to good education, lack of access to quality health care, lack of access to upward mobility and job opportunities for people. And so when you have these kind of circumstances, 
in these dense neighborhood, what happens is gangs rise up, right? Crime rises up, drugs rise up. And so the vast number of the homicides that take place, that take places in these areas are because of these things. It's, and, and because of these things, the guns become a problem, right? It is not, the guns aren't the issue, it's the underlying things that make people use guns in a manner that they were not meant to be used, in a negative manner, in a deadly manner, in a tragic manner, right? But do we think if there were no guns in these areas that, given the same circumstance, the neighborhood still would be violent? People were using knives and baseball bats and whatever else they needed to do to be able to try to survive. Um, and so uh, I would argue that given the suicide rate and, getting, and given the concentration, because keep in mind, there's 400 million guns in the country. There are guns all over the country. Yet the vast majority of the country doesn't have homicide, high homicide rate. They're very, very low. I would also add, uh, for those who are advocating for gun control, that the eight states that have the most gun control laws on the books account for over 55% of the homicides in this country. That means the remaining 42 states only account for 45%. So again, I, I'm not trying to give you a slant or anything. like I'm just giving you the facts, okay? I'm just trying to give you the facts, just the meat and potatoes of it. Now, quickly in this last set, I wanna talk about the gun control laws that you hear resonating now uh, at state and federal levels. The first of which is an assault weapons ban. That's all you hear. Oh, you don't need these weapons of war and on and on and on and on. Would it shock you to know that of the 30, 40,000 gun deaths we have every year, which is 0.01 of 1%, that 80% of all gun deaths are the result of handguns? 80%. So again, I go either, either the politicians or the media, in my opinion, are either woefully uninformed, disingenuous, or downright dishonest. Because if you look because they don't give you these facts. That if they gave you the facts and said, but we still feel this way, I'd be 100% fine by that, 100% fine with that. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion and their own view. But they only give you the facts that they want you to have because they're trying to frame the argument. So it's my goal here to try to give you all the facts and then do with them as you will. 80% of all gun deaths in this country are the result of handguns. So if you were sincere about really making a change or a difference in the gun situation we have in our country, you'd be going after handguns. You wouldn't be going after assault weapons, which make up, you know, like 1% of the gun deaths that we have in the country every year. And so 80% of all deaths are uh, committed with handguns. And so along those lines, the other law that you constantly hear uh, being proposed is capacity limits. Okay, again, <laughs> you know, most handguns have somewhere between 8, 10, 12, 16 rounds on average. What is limiting the capacity? Number one, if over 60% of all gun deaths annually are suicides, all it takes is one bullet. So having limiting capacity at 10 isn't doing anything to address the suicide problem, right? And since most handguns aren't, are either below, at, or just above 10 rounds, Eliminating, limiting them to 10 rounds is not going to do anything for the homicide rate. Okay, so again, I don't 
the high capacity magazine magazine thing, the 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 assault weapons ban again to me, it's just nibbling around the edges. It is not getting at the heart of what they're claiming it's going to do. Okay, look, so I don't want this video to be an hour long. So I'm just going to close with some final thoughts. In the United States, we don't have, contrary to what you may have heard, we don't have a gun problem. We have a mental health problem that needs to be addressed. We have socio economic disparity problems in inner city communities that lead to drugs, alcohol, violence, gangs, those things need to be addressed. And in my humble opinion, nobody on the right and nobody on the left has an answer for those problems. And the gun control measures that are being proposed right now at the federal and state level by Democratic politicians are window dressing. They are an attempt to nibble around the edges. Look, if you have the opinion that the Second Amendment is an antiquated amendment, that it was established by founders who had just come on the other side of a revolutionary war and were concerned about, you know, this kind of tyrannical government taking a foothold here in the United States, that in today's society, these weapons are not, it is not necessary for average citizens to own guns and own weapons. If one life is lost every year uh, because citizens own guns, then they should be abolished. The rights should be abolished. The amendment should be struck down. I don't agree with you, but that's an opinion I can respect because at least then you are being honest about your motivations and honest about your positioning. But for politicians to rail on and on about the homicidal nature of our country when homicides make up less than point, homicides by gun, make up less than 0 0.0003 of 1% of the population annually, and gun deaths, period, make up 0.01 of 1%, and the majority of those are suicides. I think it is just a misdirection so that people are not paying attention to the fact that we have a real mental health problem in this country and we have some socioeconomic issues that need to be addressed and they don't have the answers for them. Don't fall for the okie doke, you guys. Know the facts. Do your own homework. Come up with your own conclusions. If you have a well thought out and informed opinion, even if it differs from mine, I will always, always respect that. And I want that for this channel. So anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I appreciate you. As always, take care of one another. Peace.